In this video, I'm going to take you through the whole process of Benchmark and Generate Press and finding out is it a fast theme and a good starting point for your web design projects. When you're looking to build a WordPress website, one of the most important things when choosing a theme is how fast and how versatile is it. In this series of videos, we've been taking a look at some of the most common WordPress themes to work with page builders like Visual Composer. And today, we're going to be taking Generate Press for a spin. We're going to benchmark it and we're going to take a look at how fast it is. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed a clean copy of WordPress on the same server that I've tested everything else out on. There's no caching software or anything else installed. It is literally just WordPress and generate press and the classic editor. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at what we have, and then we're gonna benchmark just the bare theme with nothing else installed on top of it, and find out what we're working with with nothing else installed. So we're into the dashboard of WordPress, and as you can see, if we look at the theme section, we only have Generate Press installed. And if we jump over to the plugin section and see what we have in there, you can see all that's there is the classic editor. So we're now ready to start doing our first benchmark. So our tests are broken down into three distinct areas. The theme only, which is the first test. Then we install Elementor and Elementor Pro, create a header and footer and a page content and use that as a basis of testing. Finally, we add in the auto optimize plugin, optimize the website with some basic optimization settings and see how that benchmarks. We run each of these tests three times and we run them across GT metrics and ping them to give us a mean average. Once you get all that into place, we'll take a look at the results. So first of all, let's run through and go through with just the theme installed and benchmark that and get our baseline test. So currently, as you can see, the site is just a clean install of Generate Press. There's nothing in there other than the basic information you get by just installing this. So with that in place, let's just jump over to Pingdom. A couple of things we need to set up on here, first of all, is making sure that we've got the right location based upon the same country that the server resides in where our website is. I'm a UK-based individual, so I'm using a UK-based server. So we make sure that that's chosen, and then we're going to come in and we're going to choose the domain that we want to work with. Now, Pingdom is completely free. You can run exactly the same test yourself with all your websites, the same as GT Metrics. Once we've done that, we're going to hit start, start test and we're going to let that run through and go through the process of benchmarking this site to come back with our baseline result. So there's our first result. As you can see, we're getting a grade A performance. We've got a very small page size and just over one second load time. A really small amount of requests. That's a pretty good starting point. As you can see, we've got a couple of things on there that it recommends we could do, things like making fewer HTTP requests and so on. So that's our baseline. I'm going to run this two more times now and get an average across those. Then we'll move on to the GT Metrics results. So we're over into GT Metrics now. I've gone ahead and logged in. Again, this is a completely free account, but just by creating an account on here, we open up some extra options. Most important thing for me at this point is to make sure that I set the browser to be using a UK-based server. So we're going to click, go through until we get a London UK. Then we're going to go and choose our domain and we're going to run the analyze on there and see what we get back from GT Metrics and see how those figures stack up in comparison to what Pingdom give us. So there's our initial results. As you can see, we're getting great scores on the page score. But on wide slow, we're getting marked down a little bit because we're not using a CDN or content delivery network. As you can see, if we jump to that tab, it tells us we're being marked down for that. And you will always find that GT Metrics and wide slow will always mark you down if you're not using a CDN. So if you have the option, use that on your site to give you a little bit of speed boost and push up your wide slow scores. Next up, you can see we've got the fully loaded time is just over half a second. Our page size and our request is pretty consistent with what we saw on Pingdom. So again, I'm going to run this two more times to get a mean average and see what we come back with. Then we'll look at those figures and compare. So I've got those initial results back now for just the theme on its own. We're finding on Pingdom, we're getting a little under 0.6 of a second. And if we take a look at the GT metric score, we're getting just under half a second load time. So it gives us an average across both those tests of a tiny smidgen over half a second, which is a really good starting point. So next up, we're going to go through, install Elementor and Elementor Pro, create a header and a footer, and create some basic content for a page, the same content and header and footer that we've used across every other test that we've done. Then we'll benchmark and see what it's like with a page that actually has some physical content, the kind of stuff that you actually create on a website of your own. So I'm going to go through, install those, create that page, and we'll come back and start testing the next step. So I've gone ahead now and created our page layout, our header and footer, uploaded a logo. So we have a typical page that we'd expect to see as part of a normal website. You can see full width, 
nice optimized graphics and so on. Everything is in place. Now we're going to use this as the basis for our tests with Pingdom and GT Metrics. So jumped over into Pingdom. Let's just drop in that URL and again, making sure that we're in the same server location. So in the UK, start our test, let that run through and come back with its initial findings. And we're going to find out then how much difference it makes to install both Elementor and Elementor Pro and add in some physical page content. And there we go. There's our results. If we take a look, you can see we drop down a little bit now in our score. And our page size, load time, and the number of requests have all increased, which is what you kind of expect to see once you install content on there. You can see one of the things we're scoring badly for is to make fewer HTTP requests. Now, this is something where an optimization or caching tool can come in handy and reduce the number of those requests going back and forth. But this is our baseline. We're now going to go through, run those tests two more times, and then jump over to GT Metrics and run the tests on there. So let's just set up what we need. Let's change this over to the UK, drop in the URL and analyze our site. Now let's take a look if we're going to get similar results on here with the same kind of load time. We should get pretty much exactly the same when it comes to the number of requests and also the actual physical page size. And there we go. You can see we've dropped a little bit on our page speed score, but nothing too badly. However, our Y slow score has dropped more. So if we take a look on there, you can see we're still getting that content delivery network, but also again, we're seeing that make fewer HTTP requests. We're getting a fully loaded time of 1.7 seconds. So that's quite an increase on here. But like I said, this is the reason why we do three passes to get a better average. We are seeing pretty much the same page size and the number of requests. So there's our starting point on GT metrics. I'm going to run that two more times and we'll take a look at the results. So with all our test results in for the page setup with Elementor and Elementor Pro installed, we've got on Pingdom a little under one second load time. And we're finding, then we take a look at GT metrics, we're getting at just about 1.7 seconds as an average, which gives us overall about 1.3 seconds. So it's okay, it's not bad. Under two seconds is always a good starting point. I'm sure we could get it lower if we needed to. But like I say, it is a starting point. So we're going to go through now, install auto optimize, which is a free optimization tool. We're going to set up some really basic parameters in there. And then we're going to run the tests again and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I've got auto optimize open and we're just going to go through the basic settings. We're not going to go into the advanced settings. We're going to keep this really simple. So let's just go through and say we want to optimize the JavaScript, CSS and the HTML. We're not going to use a CDN because like I say, not everybody's going to have access to that or know how to set one up. So we're going to keep this as a really basic, simple thing. Jump with the images tab and we're going to do in there is we're going to say lazy load the images. And finally, on the extras tab, we're going to just come in and say remove the WordPress core emojis and remove query strings. So this is a very basic setup. So we're just going to save those changes and then we're going to rerun those tests. So let's kick things off with Pingdom. Let's just start our test on there and see what results we're going to get in. And there we go. There's our initial results. We're getting a performance grade, which is a little better than before. Our page size is looking fairly consistent. Our load time is around about the same kind of figure. So we're not seeing much there. What we are seeing is a redu reduction in those requests. So we're cutting back the number of requests. So let me run this two more times, get our mean average. Then we'll jump to GT metrics and take a look at what we're getting there. But as you can see, not every theme is going to work that well with an optimization or caching plugin, because if it's already very well optimized, there's not much left to be done. So maybe this is one of the reasons why we're seeing no real massive differences to the actual auto-optimized and the non-auto-optimized site. So let me run these tests a couple more times and come back with results. Okay, so let's just run our GT metrics tests now. Everything is set up. We're back into the London server setup and we're going to run through. And there's our initial results. You can see our scores have gone up a little bit on the page score, but what has happened is our load time has increased a fair bit. Our requests have come down, our page size is looking fairly consistent. So again, we're seeing that what we're getting is a reduction in the actual requests back and forth between the server and the site, but we are also seeing an increase in load time. So it's not working that well with the auto optimized plugin. Now, obviously there are more plugins out there available like Swift Performance Lite and so on. So it's always worth testing any of these out on your site to find out which gives you the best results. But now that I've finished with all my tests, the results for the auto optimized version are actually in. So we take a look on Pingdom, we're getting a value of around just over 1.3 second load time. Whereas if we take a look on GT metrics, we're effectively doubling that to 2.6. 
So as an average across both of those tests, we're getting a little under two second load time, which again is okay. There's obviously room for improvement. And I think if we look, looked a little bit deeper into how things are set up, we could configure and fine tune things a little better. But that should give you a good idea of the starting point that you're going to work with and whether it's worth using something like auto optimize, which if I'm honest, looking at the values before and after, I would probably not use that on a site that's using generate press as the theme it's actually slowed things down a little bit so those are the results for generate press is it a good starting point well i'd love to get your feedback on that you let me know have you used or would you consider using generate press based upon the results that you've seen in this video if you do use generate press or any of the other themes that we're covering in this series let me know in the comment section below if you found any tools that work really really well to get incredibly fast loading sites with a minimum overhead in file size i'd love to know so we can take a look at letting everybody that's looking for the perfect theme to find out better options that suits them in the same way this worked for you so let me know in the comment section below now i'd recommend taking a look at the other videos in this series if you want to find out how generate press compares to ocean WP, astra and so on i think you might find some eye-opening results in these now speaking of results i'm going to put together a video once i finish this series that will benchmark all of these and show you those results side by side so you can make a quick and easy informed decision but as always if there's any other themes you'd like me to test out that are free like I say, I want to stress the point that this is all about those free themes. We're not using any add-ons that cost any money whatsoever. So this is the starting point you work with for no outlay. Let me know what themes you'd like me to take a look at after this initial batch is done. And I'll see if I can take a look at installing, testing and benchmarking those out for you so you can get results. As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And if you'd like to check out more of our content, take a look at these videos on screen right now and start your journey through learning how to get better WordPress websites with WP Tuts.